One day in December, 1888, a pair of Colorado cowboys searching for stray cattle found instead one of our nation's most fabulous archaeological treasures. They found a silent city of stone. Here at Mesa Verde, an Indian civilization lived in our land four centuries before Columbus was born. And here, like a pearl of history in its recently opened shell, the city stands today wondrously preserved. This was the first great milestone of the master builders who today people the pueblos of New Mexico. This is their high point of heritage. The Indians who lived in this city were a peaceful people, given to raising corn, weaving baskets, and shaping pottery for their daily needs. And to supplement their diet with fresh killed game, they hunted the buffalo, hunted him by cornering him in the canyons and destroying him with their spears. But in the year 1276, a great drought settled on the southwest, a 24-year drought that destroyed the crops and the game. The gods turned their backs on the people of Mesa Verde and turned a relentless sun upon the earth, drying up rivers, softening the soil to sand, and curling the sand into the barren submission of desert. And so the Pueblo, or community living people, walked away from their cities, for the source of their sustenance was gone. They left their solidly constructed homes, buried their dead, and abandoned the gods who had abandoned them. Water was their link with life. They followed the streams from their source, followed the lifelines in multiple directions southward in search of new places to settle. And today, in the basin of the Rio Grande, some 16 pueblos stand. It was here that most of the Mesa Verde people came, and they built no finer testimony to their heritage as master builders than the exquisite Pueblo of Taos. In two adobe brick constructed apartment houses, five stories in height, the people of Taos live much as they've lived since before the white man found them. They are still a peaceful people, and at Taos particularly, they cling to the old ways with a fierce determination, believing that if their traditions die, their strength and dignity will die with them. The Taos tribe, like their distant ancestors, are almost entirely an agricultural people. By irrigation, they raise the staples of the Southwest, corn, beans, and alfalfa. Their earth has an insatiable thirst but it is satisfied by water drawn from the tributaries of the Rio Grande. And thus do their crops thrive, and the people, by their skill and labor, manage to live without surrendering to the civilization that surrounds them. Some 200 miles to the southwest of Taos is the village of Zuni, the largest of the pueblos of New Mexico. Its Oya girls, or water bearers, are paintings come to life, singularly colorful and endowed with a graceful carriage unequaled in the white man's world. The pottery makers of Zuni 
still work as did their maternal ancestors at Mesa Verde. Without the potter's wheel, with no tools but their sense of taste and their touch. But in the past 25 years, something has happened to revolutionize life at Zuni. The tribe has achieved a worldwide renown as makers of jewelry. And in nearly every house in the Pueblo, the people are at work with modern equipment, but always utilizing indigenous Pueblo designs. Jewelry was fashioned in the dead city to the north a thousand years ago. And then as now, the people worked with turquoise. No Indian can resist its subtle shades of green and blue, its serene poetic qualities, its delicacy of mood, and its timeless durability. Yes, jewelry making is a product of the Pueblo heritage, but in the Zuni of today, it has become a priceless art and a million dollar industry. This covered wagon is unique among the traditional pieces. All turquoise and silver, it contains old golds. The Pueblo of Acoma lies between the villages of the Rio Grande and Zuni, and it's the site of one of the oldest and finest Catholic churches on the continent. Here, on their impregnable rock, the Akamas have built a village that has stood for centuries. And in their isolation, they too have kept much of their past alive. Like all the Pueblo peoples, they make pottery to carry and store water and to sell to tourists. But none decorate their work with more intricate and aesthetically satisfying designs. This Pueblo is known to history and to its own inhabitants as the Sky City. And as a natural fortress, it's the Gibraltar of the Southwest. Located on a massive rock about a mile long and 357 feet high, it could until recently be reached only by dangerous trails cut like scars in its sheer stone face. The warlike Apache, Comanche, Navajo never succeeded in assaulting it. Only the Spanish conquistador with his gunpowder and greed could conquer the Sky City. New Mexico is called the land of enchantment, and justly so but it contains no more enchanted corner than Akama, with its wind-sculptured rocks and its crevices carved by the centuries. This great sandstone pit is used by the people as a basin to catch and hold the rainwater. And many an artist or poet has looked down into this recess and found in it a reservoir of inspiration. At Santa Fe, traditional capital of New Mexico, one learns that the Pueblo heritage is not the exclusive property of the past. 
home of historic sites, of solemn, massive cathedrals, of the famous adobe architecture of the Southwest, Santa Fe is also the home of a fine, modern government school for Indian youth. To this campus come students from Zuni and Taos, Acamo and San Ildefonso, from all 19 pueblos in the state. And here, under an enlightened program offered by the United States Office of Indian Affairs, they are taught how to put their heritage to work, how to carry the art of jewelry making further than it has traveled in a thousand years. This is not entirely on new equipment, but rather on new expressions of old artistic impulses. Tremendous strides are being made in the field of fine arts. Under excellent instruction, in this case by a well-established Indian artist, a first-rate Pueblo school of painting has developed. Pueblo painting is characterized by its grace and design. It is often flat and formalized, and yet it throbs with vitality, with humor, and with a deep reverence for nature. Yes, out of the educational system has come a new generation, thoroughly equipped to meet the challenge of a changing world. At Taos, Tony Rena, college background, progressive, cultured, and a connoisseur of the arts, is rendering his people a great service by promoting the works of outstanding Indian painters. His good taste has gone beyond painting in the winning of friends for his race. In the development of a new and progressive generation, an even greater influence than the schools was World War II. At Zuni, as in many other Pueblos, veterans have gone to school under the GI Bill of Rights. These young men, exposed for four years to other parts of the nation and the world, are studying modern methods of farming and living. Theirs is the conviction that the promise of the Pueblo people lies not only in a reverence for the past, but in an ability to adapt oneself to meet the future on its own terms. This man drove a tank in Normandy. Today it's a tractor at Zuni. His eyes are on tomorrow. But once each year, all eyes in the Pueblo world turn toward Gallup, New Mexico, in the heart of the Indian country. Young and old, they come here for a holiday. August, there occurs in this normally quiet little town the greatest remaining primitive spectacle in America. It's the Indians who make it what it is, the first Americans celebrating a birthday party. They come to have fun, to mingle with other tribes, to display their costumes and talents, to lay before the white man the glory of their past. are 
presented. Then they are joined by other tribes, the Cheyenne, Apache Devil Dancers. The Ancient Enemy, the Navajo. War Dancers from Taos. Eagle dancers, a rich prize if you can hit the right exposure, but who knows what to focus on first. historic Sioux to the peaceful Potawatomi, they gather at Gallup with the Pueblo tribes, the Indian heart beating as one, exhibiting freely the treasures of their tradition. Between their scheduled performances, the dancers can be found on the hills about the town. Why do the Pueblo people dance? Because in this way they pray, and even as their dance is perfect, so shall it please the gods. Thus it is, here on the hills, and so is it once in the silent city of stone. On the hills above Gallup, one finds more than a panorama of the past. One finds the promise that a heritage worth preserving will endure. <laughs>